homage to the exalted one, the worthy one, the perfectly enlightened one. Buddham, 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 one day. Dhammang, 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 one day. Sangham, 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 one day. Buddham, Dhammam, Sangham, one day. Samantha Chakravali Su Atra Gachantu Devata Sadhammang Munirajas Sunantu Sagh Mukhadam Dhamma Savan Kalo Ayang Badanta Dhamma Savan Kalo Ayang Badanta Dhamma Savan Kalo Ayam Badanta Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arehato Samma Sambuddhansa Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arehato Samma Sambuddhansa Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arehato Samma Sambuddhansa Lobo Akusale Mulam Doso Akusale Mulam Moho Akusale Mulam Dear friends in the Dhamma, uh, Today we are going to explain very special topic in Buddhism that the wholesome and the unwholesome. You know, uh, have you any idea about Buddhism? What do you know about Buddhism? Hmm? Yes. No? Ah, okay. Uh, now uh, we have been doing this class uh, several years. Uh, day by day, weekly, we discuss some kind of special doctrines in Buddhism. And today we are especially going to discuss about uh, our negative and positive emotions. Okay? Um, when we discuss Buddhism, uh, there are a lot of teachings in Buddhism uh, about our life and the world. And especially Buddha explain uh, the way how to overcome suffering. That is the main advice in Buddhism. That is the main purpose of Buddhism. You know, everybody likes to overcome suffering. That is our main purpose. Without any difference, anybody likes, everybody likes happiness. Everybody wants to get rid of suffering. That is our main purpose of our life. You know, in the name of happiness, we do a lot of things in the world. What we do? We study, we do jobs, hmm, uh, we get married, uh, we feed our children, uh, we buy some house, hmm, lands, hmm, goods, hmm, uh, we decorate our physical body, we wear very beautiful clothes, hmm. uh, we do make up our body, we do everything in the name of happiness. But you know, unfortunately, day by day, we are going to happier life for, for real life. <laughs> uh, day by day, we are losing our happiness. You know, when we think our very uh, little childhood, we were so happy. Eh? Now, in the name of happiness, we did a lot of things. Uh, we were graduated, uh, we did a lot of uh, jobs, mm, we earned a lot of money. But day by day, we are going to opposite of happiness. What is the reason? One of the reasons is that we are trusting the physical things, materials, in outside. 
which are changed, uh, which are destroyed, which are aging. That is the reason why we are going opposite of happiness. But if we like to become the real happiness, we should trust in our mind. Mind is the main thing, whether we are happy or not. If we can purify our mind little by little, that is the only way that we can receive our real happiness. Then according to Buddhism, uh, there are three unwholesome deeds, unwholesome roots that disturb our peace of mind. What they are? Uh, there are three major unwholesome roots in our mind that disturb our peace of mind. What they are? Loba. Loba means craving, greed or desire. Loba means in Buddha's language in Pali. Dosa. In Pali it means anger or ill will. And Moha. Moha means ignorance or delusion. You know, these three unwholesome roots arise especially because of ignorance. When we get upset, when we are angry, when we have a big attachment, be sure at that moment we live in the past experience. You know, living in the present moment, we have no suffering, we have no problems. Mostly, we suffer when we live in the past experience. For example, we usually get an example that when somebody has blamed you, when you remember that person, what happens to you? Yeah? we usually get angry. What is the reason? Suddenly our mind goes to the past. Sometimes that person doesn't know that we are thinking about his incident. As soon as we remember that incident, immediately our mind goes to the past, not only going to the past, but our mind lives in the past experience. That is why anger arises. That is why we are suffering. If we can overcome this ignorance, this is the main ignorance that we have. If we can overcome this ignorance, actually, we are clever to live in the present moment and also we can overcome suffering. This is the main purpose of Buddhism, but this is the highest goal. Until we reach this uh, achievement, goal, Buddhism has explained some kind of um, advice in his teachings. You know, everybody who is in the world wishes to succeed this life. You know, according to Buddhism, if we want to succeed this life, we have to fulfill four things. What they are? Huh? I have explained it uh, several times. Huh? If you want to succeed this life, huh? you have to succeed education. There are a lot of teachings in Buddhism how we succeed in our education. Not only we should succeed in education, but you know, we should give good education to our children for their future. On the other hand, when we are going to succeed this life, we have to do any other thing. What thing? One of them is, eh? Eh? Employment. Hmm? We have to do good jobs. According to our education, we have to find a good job. Not only having a good job, we have to earn money in righteous way, correct way. That is also very important. 
what else huh health very good huh we should have health huh if we want to succeed this life we should have good health healthy life not only physical health but we should have mental health too both are very important and what is the next one eh uh, next one is moral life eh uh, virtuous life morality these four things are very important for everybody who wants to succeed this life whether they believe next life or not whether somebody believes their past life or not everybody who are in the world they like to succeed in these four fields in buddhism there are a lot of teachings that we can see about these four areas okay this is in short uh, uh, i am going to explain uh, buddhism in brief okay uh, for you huh? okay and uh, these are the things that we should follow to succeed this life okay not only we should succeed this life we have to succeed our next life too you know those four things are done by any people in the world you know there are very intelligent educated people in the world sometimes they they don't have any religion uh, they don't believe their next life or previous lives but because of their intelligence they practice those four things uh, they study very well they do good jobs and uh, they take care of their body and mind and also they have a moral life they don't disturb others they don't kill others they don't tell lies actually they are honest people and um, not only we should succeed in those four areas but according to buddhism we have to practice other three things for our inner peace they are said as three meritorious deeds three vidya punya kriya yeah three meritorious deeds they are uh, generosity okay in buddhism it says dana uh dana dana in pali language dana means giving something to others uh the way how to overcome our greed hmm generosity is the opposite of greed attachment lustful desire and the next one is uh, morality morality means in buddha's language in pali it says as seela seela means the discipline in our speech and behavior whatever we do physically and mentally we do everything consciously with mindfulness in a correct way this is this is also very important he who wishes to attain a new good life blissful life the next one what is the next me uh, um meditative speed meditation okay meditation meditation means our mental culture uh, bhavana meditation our mental culture okay why we should do this three activities three deeds for our inner peace you know everybody likes their inner peace uh, when we are greedy actually we have no inner peace if you are ready to offer something to others at least um, a bottle of water then our mind is so pure and calm we are so generous you know especially in eastern people they are always ready to offer something to others especially asian people when they eat something 
as a habit they offer something to others who are near them as a tradition but in this western society sometimes it is difficult to practice uh, they can show you if they have problems <laughs> but here we can offer only water but in asian countries they are ready to offer something to others when they eat before offering something to others they never eat as a habit actually it is also generous we can say a lot of things about generosity donation but if we don't practice it our knowledge is useless therefore according to buddhism first of all we should be knowledgeable then you know we should be practicable we should practice it not only knowledge that we should have we should practice it in our day to day life and also seal i mean morality discipline in our speech and behavior if we have good discipline you know then other people like us uh eh? discipline morality or good habits hmm? you know even though we were born alone even though we will die alone we live in a society we can't live alone we live with many people you know many people help us every day you know when you come here uh, somebody has cleaned everywhere and uh, somebody has uh, Uh, put some water for you for your tan somebody has uh, taken uh, some flowers for your eyes and uh, somebody has put off the put on the switch of ac for your uh, physical body how nice how many people have helped you we should be generous we should be grateful actually if we are not grateful we have no any other quality that is why buddha said in his own language pali kevala he sa bhikkhave sa purusha bhumi yadidam khatanyuta khatvedi it means all good qualities depends on gratitude if we are no grateful we have nothing it doesn't sound it doesn't mean that we always should return them sometimes we can't uh, help them other, other way but in our mind eh yeah, we should be grateful you know day by day when we go forward our good qualities should increase gradually and meditation meditation means that you know our mental culture we purify our mind from negative thoughts although we have a lot of facilities even though we are well educated although we are very rich even though we have well educated children if our mind is polluted everything that we receive da useless then the very important thing the purify purify mind pure mind then always we should try to purify our mind from negative emotions our success our happiness our proficiency completely depends on how far we have purify our mind from negative emotions they are lustful desire or craving anger or ill will and delusion okay day by day we should try to overcome these negative emotions from our mind and also as much as we can we should try to practice these meritorious deeds it is helpful not only here after next life it is useful in this life itself that is why buddha, buddha says sukho punya sauchiyo practice in merit is synonym for happiness practicing merit means practicing happiness more merits more happiness no merits no happiness 
ఓకే స్పెషలీ వీ షుడ్ గ్రేట్ ఫుల్ టు అవర్ పేరెంట్స్ దట్ ఈస్ ద ఫస్ట్ థింగ్ ఆన్ ది అదర్ సైడ్ యు నో ఇఫ్ యూ డూ అ జాబ్ వి షుడ్ డూ ఇట్ వెరీ వెల్ ఓకే డే బై డే వి షుడ్ ట్రై టు and do good deeds and for the said you know on this path and would they explain the path of liberation on this path we should have good uh, major qualities uh, you can guess them you can think what is your idea what what are the major qualities what are the main qualities that you should have in your mind yes kindness also very good yes very good mm-hmm. kindness okay the very first thing is mm-hmm. honesty is first Mm-hmm. the second one is kindness the third one compassion very good but when we are when we have kindness plus compassion okay when we have love in kindness we have compassion sympathetic joy and equanimity four of them are together satra brahma viharana metta karuna mudita upekka four of them are together when we practice love and kindness we have compassion sympathetic joy and also equanimity four of them are together what else fairness it means what are the synonyms just it Oh, you can include it here, honestly. Mm-hmm. Righteous life, honesty, justice. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, huh? and also when we have these qualities automatically the other quality comes that is gratitude mm. gratitude especially you know on this path we can find whether we are on the path of liberation how much we practice these qualities we should not have other recommendations we can have a self recommendation although other people appreciate us if we are worried actually those appreciations are useless when we are alone if we are not happy other appreciations are useless when we are alone in our room we should be happy about our life about our mind uh, that is the place where we can check our uh, success when we are alone not with your devices like laptop or uh, <laughs> handphone uh, without those devices when you are alone when you are happy when you think about your mind that is the real success in our life okay and uh, with these four qualities we should go forward in this level very certain level you know we have the knowledge of karmic law we have the confidence in the karmic law in this level in very first level that i explained before education employment morality and health in that level some people may not uh, believe karmic law but when we come to this level we believe the karmic law what is the nature of the karmic law 
whatever we do consciously we will have the same result you know if we do something with wicked mind polluted mind we will have the negative result what is the reason because of polluted mind when we do something with pure mind blissful mind we will have the same results fruitful results for the reason because of your mind we have this kind of confidence in this level and uh, you know sometimes when we describe karmic law some people may think that uh, we may have a previous life and also we will have a next life it is also included to karmic law but the special thing whatever we do in this life we will have the same result if you offer something to others in the morning in the evening you will receive something that is also karmic law but we don't believe the result of karmic law in this life actually 70% results are he not here after when you work hard you will earn more money when you study hardly you will have more education and you will have more good jobs those results are in this life visible results immediately affect you when you blame others they also blame you <laughs> when do, when when you hit somebody you will have the return that is also karma the karmic law not only here after okay then if we have this kind of understanding as much as we can we try to practice these qualities in this life to succeed in this life and hereafter especially buddha explained punyan sukham jivita sankhyami it means at the end of this life when we think our meritorious life we can be happy you know day by day our close relatives go away they departed day by day our physical body is going to old age your good complexion day by day going to old age even though you like or not whether you know or not that is the reality when those things are changing then the only thing that we have which follows us is our mind your mind if you are clever to purify our mind day by day that is only that we have as a good friend as a best friend a yeah, purified mind is the best friend who never leaves us even though your children leave you one day even though your parents one day leave you but the purified mind never leaves you it follows you wherever you go then that is why at the very beginning we have to practice these kind of qualities in our life okay you know these both steps are described not only in buddhism but other religions religions also we can see doing good deeds or in bad deeds has said in other religions too but buddhism has a special thing what is that when we compare other religions and philosophers buddhism has an identity until we come to this level second level it is same buddhism and other religions teachings are same but when we go to the third level completely buddhism is a unique what is that it means the explanation of impermanence the explanation of dependent origination the explanation of the four noble truths you know whatever we have in this moment as our experience that we receive through our senses 
that experience arises in this moment it doesn't it it didn't come to present from the past for example when i do this sound this sound didn't come to the present from the past and also this sound doesn't go to future from the present it arises and ceases at the moment our all experience also like that when you see something when you hear something when you smell something any experience that you receive through our senses is same but because of our ignorance delusion as experience we think that still it is happening that is the cause of suffering that is the reason of delusion that is the reason of greed and anger if we can overcome this delusion actually gradually we are overcoming suffering we are reducing suffering and this is a very deep level explanation but however little by little we should be knowledgeable we have to understand this reality okay especially first of all we should have knowledge about this process and then we have to reflect on it again and again and also we should practice it through our meditation in our day to day life here you know according to third level after the experience after the knowledge that we receive through our listening then we get knowledge knowledge is very important and also reflecting according to what we listening to and practice hmm. practice means practice means according to three things we have to practice it in our day to day life how do we practice it hmm virtue hmm virtue concentration for samatha and wisdom hmm. this is the path on this path now we are going to um discuss uh, this handout that we prepared today in sammaditi sutta there is a very special discourse in buddhism sammaditi sammaditi means right view correct understanding right vision harmonious vision at the very beginning on this path we should be knowledgeable and we should have clear vision where we are going to what we practice in this discourse here i am going to explain the very special discourse in madhyama nikaya in middle length discourses in buddhism uh, said by venerable sariputta <laughs> venerable sariputta is the chief disciple of the buddha he is the dhamma sena adipati the command of the dhamma hmm sariputta was the the brigade brigade of the uh, the community of the sangha that is why he is said as dhamma sena adipati sevarana so, sariputta explains here the 14 ways one five 15 ways how to we achieve right understanding one of them is described here here described only one thing kamma patavara kamma patavara means action and reaction about the our karmic law here it is described about the karmic law okay there are ten unwholesome deeds which we have physically verbally and mentally if we want to go on the path of liberation we should have good attention good awareness right understanding harmonious vision that here the understanding of karmic law is very important 
in our life there are 10 unwholesome deeds that we have what they are the first one end of the first page and killing living beings is unwholesome the second one is stealing is stealing is unwholesome and next one sexual misconduct is unwholesome and false speech is unwholesome fifth one malicious speech for kusunavacha and sixth one parusavacha harsh harsh speech is unwholesome seventh one gossip gossip is unwholesome and covetousness 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 means greed big attachment uh, lustful desire it is in i think it is in british english covetousness covetousness it is not in western society we, we can uh, find it very rarely hmm? the synonyms are greed big attachment or craving okay and ill will is unwholesome and wrong view delusion or ignorance these are the main unwholesome deeds which we have in our life samma verbally samma physically samma mentally you know the first three things are how do we them physically very good very first three are done by a physical body uh, next four things 4 5 6 and 7 are done by speech we do those four things uh, verbally and next three things are uh, made in mind hmm. okay now we are going to find the reasons roots of this unwholesome deed uh can you imagine it huh can you imagine it only thing i let us i'm sorry i'm sorry hi let's say no please i'm sorry and i'm sorry uh, it, it is uh, another uh, handout uh, i uh, brought it but i will explain everything here okay how uh, does killing action arise what are the root of killing something anger very good anger is the root or reason of killing other beings when we kill somebody then we are angry for example when somebody has a greed about uh, meat then uh, he can um, kill some animal then you can say and uh, he killed that animal because of its uh, desire it is true correct no very close reason is anger mm-hmm. here we are finding the very close reason nearest reason okay before he had uh, desire of uh, eating some meat but when he killed some animal Uh, he is angry uh, the main emotion that he has in his mind is anger oily at that moment uh, very near a season okay what is the reason of his stealing desire uh, the reason the root of stealing is greed lobe what is the reason of sexual misconduct desire or lobe or craving what is the reason of false speech 
why do we tell lies? The nearest reason is desire, greed. Okay. What is the reason of malicious speech? Uh, anger. Anger. Uh, what is the reason of uh, harsh speech? Anger. It is very clear. What is the reason of gossip? When you are gossiping, the intelligent persons understand that you are you are mad you are mad when you are gossiping you show your ignorance your madness be careful near the intelligent person <laughs> okay this is the only thing that other persons can find whether you are intelligent or not this is the only one thing according to our speech according to our words that we use when we speak intelligent persons understand whether you are intelligent or not actually we can't speak and good words words if we have no right understanding samaditi before we speak something we should have good intentions good emotions in our heart when we are going to have a good heart our vision should be correct we should have right vision about the karmic law and the dependent origination about the impermanence okay when our vision is correct our emotions also are correct and automatically our speech is correct we have nothing to correct it is a result of our righteous vision vision okay then what is the cause of what is the root of gossip what is the cause of what is the root of gossip ignorance delusion eh when you are speaking gossip intelligent persons understand you are not intelligent eh you may be beautiful you may be well educated but you are not intelligent eh okay what is the cause of desire the cause of this error is abhijna is means greed and the cause of greed the root also greed hmm. same and what is the cause of ill will anger both are same hmm. and the wrong view what is the cause of wrong view ignorance delusion very good hmm. and we can check our life by ourselves mm-hmm. if we are intelligent if we are knowledgeable about what buddha said actually we are so lucky we can check ourselves day by day we can realize we can understand whether we are on the path of liberation or opposite side yeah for you know some people have some activities in the name of happiness but we know very well that is not the way to happiness because we are knowledgeable we are understanding what buddha said hmm when we don't do those kind of activities we know very well that is not the path of happiness yeah we go away from these activities okay these are the unwholesome deeds some are done by body some happens in our speech some happen and eh, in our mind verbally physically and mentally okay these are the unwholesome deeds 
and also what are the roots of unwholesome deed? There are three main roots. They are greed, hate, and delusion. Okay? If you are knowledgeable about these actions and roots, hmm, it means we have right vision, right understanding where we are going to, what we practice. We are so lucky. On the other side, Buddha has explained the wholesome and the roots of wholesome. What are the wholesome? Opposite side. Eh? Okay? Abstention from killing living beings, abstention from stealing, abstention from sexual misconduct, abstention from false speech, abstention from malicious speech, and abstention from harsh speech, abstention from gossip, uh, uncovetedness or non-greed, non-greed, non-ill will, right view. Uh, these are the good deeds that we can develop in our life. What are the roots of these unwholesome deeds, for some deeds? One of them is non-greed, non-hate, non-delusion. On the other way, generosity, loving kindness and wisdom. Uh, with the understanding of right view, right understanding about the karmic law, if we protect our mind, then we always keep our mind with generosity, loving kindness and wisdom or intelligence. Then with good good and good intention, anywhere we can do. Anywhere we can go. Anything that we can do. It doesn't matter, you know. Whatever we do is correct, right. It means day by day we purify our mind. Always take care of your mind like a very beautiful, woody smell, rose flower. Don't disturb your mind. Don't give any chance to anybody to steal your good qualities from your mind that you have accumulated in your sansaric journey. Actually, we have a lot of inner qualities that we hardly accumulated in our previous lives. Don't give any chance to anybody to steal your those qualities. If we are intelligent. And also, don't give any chance to, to anybody to poll- uh, pollute your mind with anger, craving or delusion then always we put our mind in front and we should purify our mind for every moment. Then day by day we are go on the path of liberation. We are on the path of happiness. Have any question about our sermon discussion? Hmm? Yes. Yes, very good question. Actually, that is the proper place that you can you can check your qualities. When all people are kind, you have nothing to practice. The place where you can apply your kindness among unkind people. You know, we have a Bodhisattva. We had a Buddha because of Devadatta. 
if there was not a devadatta we have no buddha the generosity where you can practice when other people are greedy that is the place that you can practice your generosity when other people all are generous you have nothing to practice generosity how do you practice generosity okay on the other side if you are kind we can guide them according to our understanding if you have friends who have who has no kindness you can explain them my dear friend this is a problem in your please try to overcome anger when you are angry you have no happiness please try to overcome this anger if he is ready to listen to you you can help him or her according to your understanding because of your kindness you are, you are ready to correct them too but if he can correct them we are in silent and also we change our attitude vision you know it says in buddhism as yoniso manasikara yoniso manasikara means the way how we think not to arise defilements and the way how we think that leads to develop good deeds our thinking way kusal durvena vidyata akusal akusal durvena vidyata kusal vadena vidyata chetana krame the way that we think not to arise defilements and also the way how we think how we think to develop our good deeds in our life that is very important you know in the society some people do some bad activities because of their ignorance they don't know the way how to overcome suffering uh, we should be compassionate for them uh, as the intelligent person we should never get angry you know if we are knowledge if we know buddhism like we they may be better than we are okay <laughs> don't worry about them that is why you know king dharma soka he has written some inscriptions rock inscriptions may my enemies also listening to buddha's message even my enemies may even my enemies listening to buddha's message mage saturo dharme asatwa may my enemies practice buddha's message mage saturo dharme hasiretwa why he said it you know even our enemies know this message even though they are enemies of ours eh huh? they don't disturb us because they know the karmic law when they practice this message actually they also become the good persons then when we live in the society actually most of people are ignorant that that is the nature of the world we can correct all of them but if we have our close relatives and friends if they are ready to listen to what we say we have a responsibility to, to correct them okay as an intelligent person you have a responsibility to correct them if you can correct them be silent think that this is the very proper place that i can practice this teaching okay any other question pranandu okay now um we are going to give you a short introduction about the summary today we discuss um, buddhism in short first um, what are the things that we should practice to succeed this life there are four things we should follow to succeed this life what they are education 
employment, health and morality. And if we want to succeed next life and this life mentally, that we have to practice three meritorious deeds, generosity, morality and meditation. And uh, when we are going to practice the highest level teachings in Buddhism, we should have a knowledge about the impermanence. Impermanence means any kind of experience that we have through our senses that arises at the moment. It immediately ceases without remaining anything. But because of ignorance we are not ready to accept it. Suddenly our mind goes to past or future. We have lost our beauty of life because, because we have no ability to live in the present moment. By practicing Samatha meditation, tranquility meditation, we try to train our mind in the present moment. Practicing breathing meditation, breathing in and out, practicing loving kindness meditation, we train our mind to live in the present moment. And also, with concentrated mind, we reflect on the world reality in permanence. Every moment arises and ceases. This moment mind, it takes next moment, but this moment mind doesn't go to next situation. That is our life. Then, if we are clever to develop this duration that we think about this reality, that is our success. We have given an example, you know. Living for a long time with mindfulness is like our GPA. Uh, that is Buddhist GPA, grade point average. What is your grade point average according to Buddhism? How long you are clever to keep your mind in a, a wholesome object, meditation technique. Uh, if you are clever only one minute, that is your GPA. If you are clever to keep your mind five minutes as a concentrated mind, that is your GPA. If you are clever to keep your mind for one hour, your GPA is higher. On the other side, you have an IQ too, intelligence quotient too, in Buddhism. What is the intelligent question in Buddhism? The duration, the time that you reflect on impermanence. The duration that you reflect on impermanence is your IQ. Intelligent question. Then day by day we should try to develop the time, increase the time of duration of thinking mindfulness and impermanence. Then gradually we are increasing our GPA and IQ in Buddhism. On the other side, we are developing, we are increasing our happiness. We are reducing our suffering day by day. Even though our body is going to destroy, even though we are aging day by day, even though day by day we are going to find in the state, Towards the cemetery. No, you know, we are on the path of happiness. Don't worry. Hmm. You know, everybody, after we were born, our mom have kept us in a vehicle. What is the vehicle? Which goes to the cemetery with the white flag. Yeah. <laughs> But we are fortunate, our mom has not only a white flag, but our mom has given a Buddhist flag too. <laughs> we are under the shadow of the flag of the Buddha, the path of liberation, the path of happiness. While we are in the vehicle which goes to cemetery, we are practicing the path that overcomes suffering. 
Okay. Okay, thank you for your good attention, participation. I appreciate your participation. Now the time to trans, uh, tra uh, uh, transfer the merits to our departed relatives. You know, after any kind of activity in Buddhism, we transfer the merits that we accumulated in the mind to our departed relatives. That is our tradition. Okay, by reciting a stanza, we transfer all merits that we accumulate to our departed relatives. Not only this life, we believe that there are a lot of relatives who passed away in our sansaric journey. They also wait in us to get some merit from us. When they transfer these merits to them, they can enhance their spiritual life and they can attain also final bliss of liberation. With that intention, let's transfer these merits to our beloved departed relatives in this life and our past lives too. Idam ne nyati nam o tu sukita hontu nyatayo Idam ne nyati nam o tu sukita hontu nyatayo Idam ne nyati nam o tu sukita hontu nyatayo By the power of all these merits, may guardian deities and angels also receive these merits and may they enhance their psychic energy, may they keep their eye on you too, may they also attain final bliss of liberation. With that intention, let's transfer these merits, guardian deities and angels too. Akasatha cha bhummatha devana ga mahiddhika punyantam anumoditva chirang rakhantu sasanam Akasatha cha bhummatha devana ga mahiddhika punyantam anumoditva chirang rakhantu desanam Akasatha cha bhummatha devana ga mahiddhika punyantam anumoditva chirang rakhantu tvang sada by the power of all these merits that you accumulated in the moment, may you be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to you. May no problems come to you. May no difficulties come to you. May your all righteous wishes meet with success. May all of us attain final bliss of liberation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Dukkham panta chanin dukkham bhayam panta chanin bhayam so kam panta chani so ka anto sambe pipani no. May the people bless you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.